for Uni 3, you can see the maximum conductive power, the input, is on the order of one watt. So that's the max power that the radio can put into the antenna. And the maximum ERP is 36 dBm. And ERP, equivalent isotropic radio, uh, radiated power, is just the sum of the gain and the power in for the, uh, from the radio. So if you have one watt in, or 30 dBm, it says the gain of the antenna is only going to be 6 dBi. That's pretty small compared to a macro. But for a small cell, that's, that's sort of typical. Typical small cell is anywhere from 6 to 10 dBi. So it's on the bottom end of it, but it's fairly typical, which means it has a fairly broad beam because the gain is relatively low. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And the side lobes are sticking up, sticking up around it. You don't have great control because unlike a macro, we have lots of elements, lots of degrees of freedom to control the side lobes. If you're a low gain antenna, instead of having 10 or 20 elements to control that pattern, you're only going to have one or two. You're not, well, maybe three or four. You're not going to have a lot of elements. So the Uniband 1 is very similar. It gives the same work the same input power, the same conductive power, but there's another rule. It says the maximum ERP at any elevation at angle above the horizon, above 30 degrees, has to be 21 dBm. So if you take 36 and you subtract 21, you get 15 dB. Well, that's the side load level that you need for anything above that 30 degrees. So when you're talking about an antenna that has a fairly broad beam, that main beam may be 30 degrees above the horizon if the gain is low. And because you don't have lots of elements like you do in a macro to control the side load level by all those degrees of freedom, it starts to become difficult. You can think of it like this. I have a balloon. Let the balloon be a perfectly round sphere. That's the gain of an isotropic antenna. Now I'm going to make the gain increase. I'm essentially going to squeeze that balloon. Some of it's going to point out far, and some of it's going to get pulled in. Well, the part that points out furthest is the main beam. And all those side lobes are all the different parts that squeeze out between your fingers. Now, if I have a low gain antenna, I'm not squeezing so hard that I have a huge single lobe coming out. I have lots of little lobes. Somehow I have to control those lobes so that the ones that point above the horizon are 15 dB or more below the main beam. If I can't do that, then I'm going to have to decrease the power level because my requirement is 21 dBm. I might have to decrease it quite a bit and the goal is not the goal is to be able to uh, put the energy on the ground to the users as you want. So it becomes difficult because uh, there are two competing things here. There's, you know, you want maximum uh, coverage, but you also have to decrease the energy that happens above the horizon. So, future proofing as well. Besides just being able to fit the 5.8, which is coming soon, you have to be able to fit that 3.5. And what people, gigahertz, all in the same size package. Because of all the site acquisition issues and all the different local governments that want to control how these antennas are put up on these poles, everyone is, you know, scampering to figure out how to do these upgrades as efficiently and as simply as possible. And people, what they want is they want something that's going to fit in the same size package or maybe even smaller. So there's no, you know, local regulation that's going to stop you from installing. You want to make it as simple as and efficient as possible. If you have to go through all the different um, regulator, local regulatory, um, you know, board meetings, town meetings, whatever, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. If I can just swap it with something the same size or smaller, that can fit all these different uh, new bands in along with the, what we had already, the old bands, that's great. So, you know, it's just trying to uh, pack as much 
stuff as you can into a small space, which isn't always easy as well. So one example I give here is what uh, Katron is doing for a uh, canister. So our canister right now, one version of it, is uh, doing that in terms of putting both uh, high band, 6095 to 2690 megahertz, and CBRS, and 5.8 gigahertz, into the same size package. And soon there'll be another version that has low band in it as well. I mean, it just takes a lot of effort in terms of uh, antenna design. People don't, people just say, oh, you design an antenna, you're just going to design another one, it's not a big deal. But regulatory requirements and, you know, local governments and other people who go and tell you, tell the carriers, I'm sorry, I don't like the look of your antenna. It can't be two and a half foot tall, it only can be two foot tall. It's an issue. And as they say, stuff rolls downhill, and antenna manufacturers get to deal with some of that. 